I think uh, this is probably the time that we should uh, get back to the class. Okay, so is there any question about the uh, center selection problem? I think we are a little bit hurry in time to finish the proof that this uh, greedy algorithm that uh, our strategy here uh, uh, using the, the observation that maybe uh, a good strategy is to repeatedly choose the next center to be the set uh, farthest from any existing center. Uh, and actually uh, using this kind of strategy, we gave a, a two approximation algorithm and uh, basically uh, finishes the, the proof here. So is there any specific question about the proof here? I think at last I mentioned this uh, theorem, unless P equals to NP, there is no real approximation algorithm for the center section problem. For any constant is really smaller than two, this is not required I mean, in this class. I mean, this proof is going to be using more than one uh, results, but this is just to showing that um, uh, this uh, greedy algorithm actually uh, for this is already like the best uh, algorithm that we can hope for, uh, although it's, it's actually quite simple. Okay, so is there any question for the uh, center selection problem? Okay, so uh, if there's no uh, question, let's talk about the, the last uh, 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 part of uh, today's lecture. I think basically the last part of the whole uh, class, uh, which is a uh, knapsack problem again. Okay, so I guess we have been uh, probably familiar with the uh, uh, knapsack problem. So in particular, the knapsack problem uh, having the following things. So in particular, uh, given an n objects uh, and a knapsack. And also, actually, uh, we know that assume uh, atom i weighs in that wi, uh, which is uh, larger than zero uh, kilograms. And this value of CLVI larger than zero. And the next set oh, has a capacity of W kilograms. So the goal here, the goal here is, is that we want to have like a full knapsack. Right. So it's a field knapsack, was a typo here, so as to uh, maximize the total value. Okay, so this is uh, some problem that we are actually uh, quite familiar with. Uh, we know that actually, when we talk about uh, dynamic programming, uh, we actually know that the knapsack problem can be solved by dynamic uh, programming. So in particular, how do we uh, achieve that? So we have this uh, definition of like a two input function. Uh, so we have this uh, function OPT, uh, I, uh, W uh, to be the max profit subset of I term uh, from one to until I uh, with With weight limit. So the first case uh, that uh, we know is that uh, we uh, consider the case where uh, the OPT does not select. Uh, well, for the case where the OPT does not select item I here, uh, we know that actually the OPT is actually going to select uh, the best of uh, one, two, and two I minus one. Uh, using a uh, weight limit. But for the second case, for the second case where the OPD is going to select 
uh, uh, going to select uh, uh, the, the, the ice item here. So in this case, we are going to have a new uh, weight limit, uh, which is uh, going to be a W minus WI. And then we know actually the OP key is going to select best of one, two, and two I minus one uh, using uh, the new weight limit. Okay, so uh, as a summary, uh, we can actually have this kind of relationship. So in particular, OPT uh, of I uh, W, uh, actually it equals to, to zero. I mean, if if I equals to zero, of course, if you don't have any uh, item, uh, the OPT value is just going to be zero. And the OPT uh, I minus one uh, equals to OPT I minus one W. So if actually, I mean, WI is actually larger than W. So if the ith item is just so heavy, I mean, larger than your current W, you just cannot choose that. So you know that OPT is actually, OPT IW is going to be OPT uh, I minus one W. And otherwise, I mean, if we have some uh, item and actually WI is smaller than or equal to W here, um, this is uh, going to be the max of OPT I minus one W and if we choose the item i here, it is going to give us a value of i plus an opt i minus one uh, w minus w. Okay, so this is just a very quick recap about the dynamic programming algorithm for the knapsack problem. I guess you're probably probably familiar with that. So I just, I'm just writing uh, all the things down here without a further explanation here. And I guess uh, you can probably recall that the running time of this algorithm is O of n degree. And one thing that we mentioned, I mean, in terms of the knapsack problem is that actually this is uh, not polynomial in terms of input size. And in particular, we have uh, this uh, W here. I mean, just imagine a case where, where for instance, maybe the, the value and the weight, they are just uh, huge. So in particular, I mean, uh, let's uh, just for our convenience, let's talk about a case where uh, the the item maybe uh, there, for instance, uh, have uh, very large values. Uh, so maybe uh, let's uh, say that. And I think uh, let me uh, just uh, draw a table like this. So assume that maybe we have a, a, a few items. So let's say we have item one, two, three or five. Um, but actually if the value is something huge, <laughs> if it is something uh, uh, something like this, maybe something like this, or maybe something like this. I'm just uh, writing something uh, random here, uh, but just uh, some uh, huge numbers. And the weight here. I mean, assume that for this case, the weight is small. So I'm actually going to uh, introduce another algorithm here using dynamic programming, but actually it is uh, focusing not on the weight here. It's actually uh, not uh, focusing on the weight, uh, on the weight like this, but focusing on actually, excuse me, uh, but actually focusing on the values. I'm actually uh, going to introduce an algorithm like that. But nevertheless, I mean, you can see the intuition is that in general for a problem uh, like a knapsack uh, a problem, uh, if you have an algorithm uh, which is not polynomial in terms of input size, I mean, if your value is just huge like this, this is probably really bothering and uh, maybe for some boundary case, uh, this is really difficult to judge that actually which case is better than which. So this is actually going to be a little bit annoying I and mean, in general for the knapsack problem, if you really want to find the optimal solution, uh, this is in general, actually the knapsack problem is also an NP complete problem, but we won't have time to cover the, the proof here. So actually uh, we can prove that the knapsack problem is an NP complete problem. It's just like the case where, for instance, if the width is really huge or the value is really huge, as some boundary cases, it's really difficult to make some judgment. But on the other hand, nevertheless, and actually uh, for a problem like the knapsack problem, I mean, if you are okay with approximation algorithm, I mean, if you're okay with, for instance, your value is a little, bit, uh, a little bit off from the optimal, but very close to that. Maybe for instance, in this case, I mean, of, if all these numbers, I mean, if all these numbers are really huge, I mean, 
It's probably a little bit annoying, but maybe instead we can consider something like this. So assume we have the item of value, right? So uh, maybe instead uh, we can consider uh, something like this. Okay, so the item index is still going to one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so here the weight is actually quite simple. So what if, I mean, we significantly shrink the size of the value here. So maybe for instance, let's uh, just uh, look at the, the beginning part of the, the number here, or maybe uh, make this uh, even smaller. So let's uh, divide all the numbers by approximately a thousand. So for instance, I mean, assume that this is two and this is maybe seven and this is maybe 19, 23, 29. So this is probably much more reasonable. I mean, this is like a much more reasonable case. I mean, as long as you don't want to find the exact solution of the knapsack problem, you're okay with a little bit of approximation algorithm here. You can significantly shrink, shrink the size of the value here. And that is actually a very important observation here in terms of that basically, for a problem like the knapsack problem. I mean, uh, the precise problem is actually very difficult. It's actually an NP-complete problem. But for uh, such kind of problem, knapsack problem actually exists very good approximation algorithm uh, following that. And in particular, I mean, uh, the idea that we can actually uh, talk about here in terms of the uh, approximation algorithm. Well, is that basically we can just uh, round up all the values. Okay, so why is this helpful? So as I just uh, described, so here I think for the original dynamic program uh, algorithm, we have been uh, really focusing on like the, the ways here, but actually there is a second uh, dynamic programming algorithm uh, that actually can focus on the values. And this is basically going to be the place where we uh, plug into our observation based on approximation algorithm. Okay, so how am I going to do this? So the most important thing for a dynamic program is that basically you need to have some sort of function and basically you need to uh, represent this uh, corresponding function in terms of a recursive formula. So here, as I was saying that maybe you want to focus on the values and hopefully we are making a rounding up uh, for, the, for the values here. So here we are going to, uh, uh, I mean, we are going to follow a similar pattern here. Because here, I mean, for instance, in the dynamic program for the knapsack problem, we are talking about, I mean, the first parameter is an I, which represents like the first I items. And the V here is actually, sorry, a W here is actually uh, uh, represents like the, the value here. So here we are going to use another parameter here. I guess we are probably going to keep the I here representing the dynamic program uh, has actually a process until the item I here. But actually the other parameter that we are going to use this time is going to be a V here. I mean, because we are using a V here, and instead of uh, talking about like what is the optimal value uh, that we achieve here. Here, we, uh, the definition of the OPTI V here is that we are going to talk about the mean weight uh, subset of I terms one, two, and T O I uh, that actually yields value exactly V. But here, for our convenience, uh, we consider, I mean, the OPTO IV here to uh, consider the weight subset of items that use value exactly V here. So this is a slightly different uh, compared to the original uh, dynamic program. It's not only about like a difference between W and V here, but actually we say that we hopefully use the value exactly V here and see uh, what is the cause of this algorithm. Let me say what is like the relationship that we are going to uh, deduce for, the, uh, for this OPT IV function here. Okay, so the first case that we are going to have, the first case we are going to have is that actually the OPT uh, does not uh, select item I. So what is going to happen in this case? In this case, we are just going to encounter that the OPT is actually uh, going to select the best of uh, one, uh, two, and two i minus one, um, that achieves exactly the 
value of EQ. So this is the first case. For the second case, for the second case is of course are going to be the case where actually the OPT selects item I. Okay, so in this case, I mean, after we select item I here, this is actually uh, going to consume uh, weight uh, WI here, and actually the new value needed is uh, exactly V minus VI. And then we know that the OBT is actually uh, going to uh, select on the best of uh, one, two, until uh, uh, I minus one, uh, that actually achieves uh, exactly on the value of V uh, minus V. Or formally speaking, we can actually uh, write down the following dynamic program, uh, the OPT of IV uh, equals to the following. So it, it is going to equals to zero uh, if uh, the V is zero, exactly. I mean, the choice is that going to give you exactly value of zero here. I mean, this is just going to be zero here. Or uh, if I is larger than zero, uh, V is larger than, sorry, I equals to zero, but uh, V is larger than zero. So in this case, I mean, uh, we, we don't have any uh, choice. I mean, basically we are talking about, because here we are talking about the, the OPT here to be the mean weight subset of items. I mean, um, in this case, we uh, also uh, don't have any, we also don't have any uh, choice here. So in this case, we always, we are also going to have a, have a, have a zero here. But otherwise uh, we can also uh, give a very uh, straightforward uh, uh, a formula here. So basically this is going to be the OPT of uh, I minus one on V. Uh, if actually, I mean, if the value, I mean, the value of VI is actually uh, exit on V here. So this is just going to be uh, so expensive and this is not going to be helpful for us. And or, or otherwise, maybe this is going to be the mean of uh, OPT uh, of uh, I minus uh, one on V and uh, WI uh, plus OPT uh, minus one. Otherwise. Okay, so is there any question about this uh, dynamic programming now? Okay, so um, in terms of this algorithm, I mean, uh, we uh, slightly changed the dynamic programming algorithm in terms of uh, basically as a function of the weight here. Uh, we make it here to be a function of the value. And basically for this problem, uh, we know that actually the running time, uh, the running time is actually going to be the O of N V star. We are actually the V star here. Uh, the V star here is actually the optimal value. Uh, or we can say that uh, which is the maximum uh, V uh, such that OPT and V is smaller than or equal to W. So we know that actually the running time of this algorithm is uh, going to be O of N uh, V star because this V star is the best possible value that you can I reach to make the problem actually the output uh, make sense. Uh, but actually we don't know what is the, the value of the V star here, but we know the value of the V max. The V max is actually the largest value in, original, in the original instance. So in any case, we know that actually uh, v star is actually smaller than n times v max. Because in the, I mean, in the most extreme case, I mean, even if we just pick all of the items, I mean, the, the v star here should just be at most n times uh, v max here. So uh, this is just uh, due to the definition here. So 
Uh, the good thing for the Vmax, I mean, com uh, compared to Vstar, is that the Vmax is uh, something just apparent. So, for instance, here the Vmax is just this value. So this is uh, just uh, something quite apparent, and basically you know what this uh, Vstar is. So basically, if you know the running time is O of uh, n times Vstar, then basically, uh, since the fact that uh, we, uh, based on the fact that Vstar is at most n times of Vmax, we know that this is actually O of n squared. Oh, like this. Okay, so another thing that I mean uh, we can uh, make observation here is that uh, in terms of the Vmax, I mean, basically the, the item with the largest value in original instance. So without loss of generality, without loss of generality, uh, we can assume the weight uh, Wmax corresponds to corresponds to this uh, value of, of Vmax, uh, actually satisfies, satisfies, uh, let's say, Wmax smaller than equal to W. I mean, otherwise, I mean, even if you know that actually the Vmax here is, is really good, I mean, but actually its corresponding weight is already a larger than your limit W here. You can never be able uh, to choose that. I mean, in this case, it's probably, I mean, you just don't need to uh, worry about that. You can just, uh, we never select this icon uh, and can simply delete it. But here, as long as we are talking about the Vmax, uh, basically uh, here, we, uh, we just assume that this at least it is uh, selectable. And in terms of selectable, it is just the Wmax, uh, the way it corresponds to the item, we should shift this Vmax is at most W. Otherwise, we just do Okay, so is there any question up to here? Okay, so the remaining thing that we are going to do here is that uh, basically we are going to uh, use uh, the observation here, uh, basically the observation here. Um, I guess in general, I mean, for a lot of practical knapsack problem, it is typically the values quite expensive and a little bit hard to, I mean, for instance, you have a little bit value, uh, all the values like this. For the extreme case, this is extremely difficult. But basically, we want to run the values. I mean, basically, run, uh, run the value to the obvious uh, that is uh, much smaller. And this is actually the place that we are going to attack the problem. And in particular, I mean, we are probably going to formulate this uh, clearly that how we are going to make the rounding here. So we are actually going to do something like this. We say that actually to make to make this uh, polynomial uh, in input size. So basically, we are going to do uh, things like this. So we are going to run all values. So we say that we are going to run all values up. So this is a little bit important because I mean, if you're rounding it to be, for instance, like the closest integer, or this is going to be like larger than that or slower than that. I mean, uh, this is going to be a little bit confusing. So we point out that we are going to round the values up to lie in a smaller range. So this is the first point. And the second point is, of course, that after you make the rounding, we just run dynamic programming. on the rounded instance. And after that, I mean, we just return on the optimal items in the rounded instance. And this is basically the, the strategy that we are going to use here. So I talked about the intuition that maybe we want to have like a specific rule about how we run the, the values. And here we say that we choose to run all the values up to lie in a smaller range. So in particular, we are going to do something like this. In particular, uh, we are run up by consider something like this. So for each item, we consider this a uh, vi bar to be the new value that is assigned. 
Uh, this vi bar is actually going to equal to uh, vi uh, divided by theta uh, with the ceiling function uh, times theta. And similarly, I mean, we have like another uh, definition called the vi hat. vi hat is just going to be this part, uh, vi divided by theta. So the ceiling function is something like 3.1 equals to 4, or 3.9 also equals to 4. It is going to be the closest integer that is actually above the value that we're talking about. Or if it is an integer just returning. So here, I think there is a new parameter. Uh, the new parameter is the theta here. So here, we probably need to specify. I mean, also we were talking about the approximation algorithm. If you are rounding here, I mean, inevitably you are going to have like a, uh, a relationship in terms of some, I mean, for instance, you want to have like an epsilon approximation, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, one plus epsilon approximation, hopefully. I mean, this is definitely going to uh, have like something to do with the approximation factor here. So here we say that epsilon is the precision uh, parameter. And of course, we also need to specify what is the, the theta here. The theta here is called a scaling factor. And in our uh, specific algorithm for the knapsack problem, we choose a scaling factor to be epsilon times V max over N. So this is our specific choice of the scaling factor here. So the epsilon is up to our choice. N is known as the input, uh, input from the problem. And V max is also, I mean, you just like check what is the V max here. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, 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 like calculating this uh, scaling factor is uh, quite straightforward. So we are uh, later going to see why we want to choose uh, this uh, specific value of the uh, scaling factor. But actually a very important point, I mean, we're talking about I mean, approximation algorithm about like rounding up all values. The most important observation here, the most important observation here is that actually the optimal solution the optimal solution to our problems uh, with the, uh, uh, the problems, the problems with the, the, the bar of uh, these or the hat piece, uh, they're actually just equivalent. So I guess this is uh, just straightforward because actually, I mean, they actually have uh, just proportional to each other. I mean, uh, if the two instances are strictly proportional to each other and for uh, all the i's, the proportion is actually the same, then you can clearly see that the optimal solution to the problem with uh, the bar bees and cat bees, they're actually, they must be equivalent. And furthermore, the intuition, I mean, why that actually we can give a good algorithm for the knapsack problem. Uh, I guess this intuition is also uh, not so uh, hard to imagine. No, it's just that actually the 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 bar v here is actually uh, close to it's actually close to v. I mean, basically, I mean they are actually rounding here. But actually, I mean uh, using this rounding, this value should be not so far from the original value v here. So basically, uh, the intuition is that uh, the bar v here should be uh, close to v. Uh, so optimal solution. So uh, the optimal uh, solution uh, using uh, V bar here should be uh, nearly optimal. But also on the other hand, I mean, we know that actually the optimal solution to the bar V and the hat V, they should uh, be uh, equivalent. Uh, but also on the other hand, I mean, after we consider the problem of uh, bar V instead of the original V here, we can just further reduce this to the problem hat V. And the problem has to be here is actually a small and also a, a, a integral. I mean, because we are doing the rounding here, so this is still an inter, uh, integral problem. So we can still uh, feel free to run our algorithm. And actually the dynamic programming here is actually fast. Okay, so this is the intuition. And the final algorithm is actually a super simple. So the algorithm that we are going to use here is just that we run, we run dynamic programming. 
how we run dynamic uh, programming. Uh, is, uh, uh, actually, the value version, uh, which is uh, basically this version. So we say this is the value version. Yeah, this is the value. So we just run the value version uh, of the uh, dynamical programming algorithm here, uh, but actually on um, on the uh, this is the ultimate algorithm that we actually use here. So in particular, the running time that we are going to uh, pay here is that we know, I mean, basically uh, based on the discussion here, based on the discussion here, we know that the running time of this algorithm is going to be O n squared times uh, V max. But here we are talking about a hat V here, so that is going to be hat V max. Uh, but actually here we know that hat V max it is going to be uh, equal to, uh, based on our definition, uh, based on this definition and the choice of the scaling factor here. So this is uh, actually going to be a uh, Vmax. The scaling function of Vmax over uh, theta. And we know that theta is actually epsilon times Vmax over n here. Uh, so this is actually uh, going to uh, uh, be the scaling function of n over epsilon. And this is actually going to give us that a running time uh, is actually uh, going to be O of n cube divided by epsilon. So this is actually, I mean, compared to the original algorithm, I mean, compared to the original algorithm with uh, this complexity, or maybe uh, with the knapsack, uh, the dynamic program that we talked about at the uh, previous class in dynamic program. So basically this complexity, so this uh, bound is only contained of n and epsilon, and it is independent of the, the input. Uh, basically, uh, we only have this kind of n and epsilon uh, as, as the uh, final running time, and this is uh, actually does not have the specific like the uh, v max, uh, v, sorry, v star or v max dependence or the w dependence in terms of original uh, dynamic uh, programming algorithms. So this is like a, a clear bound. And I guess the only remaining thing that we uh, need to prove, I mean, a theorem, is of course, after talking about all these kind of intuitions that basically, I mean, uh, supposedly, I mean, this is uh, going to give a near optimal solution for the knapsack problem. Uh, and I guess we definitely need to prove. It. So this is uh, going to be something like this. So if S is a solution uh, uh, by our algorithm, And uh, let's say that S star is another feasible solution. So here the proof is actually a little bit, I mean, I mean, uh, arbitrary. I mean, we uh, not only prove that actually we are uh, absolutely uh, close to the optimal solution, but in general, we can prove that actually uh, one plus epsilon, I mean, sigma i from S on V i. I mean, this value should be uh, just dominate all the others, all the other possible solutions, and for uh, any uh, other feasible solution as star. They're going to have this. Okay, so uh, let's uh, finally prove this uh, theorem here. The proof is that uh, we are going to have this kind of chain of inequalities. So we are uh, basically going to have two relationships. So as uh, basically uh, discussed in this, uh, uh, intuition here. So the intuition here is that uh, we are going to have two relationships. We are going to first re uh, relate uh, the problem of V to the problem of bar V here. And then we are going to re uh, re uh, relate the problem of uh, bar V to the hat V problems here. So in particular, uh, for the line of inequalities here, we are going to show is that actually the summation of I from I star of VI is actually going to be smaller than the summation of I on I star VI bar. So this is actually just due to the fact that we always round up. I mean, we always run up in this uh, saving function. So this is actually saying that this is always uh, larger than. I mean, this is a uh, straightforward because I mean, uh, X is always, I mean, the saving function of X is always larger than X. So here, I mean, uh, when we can consider this a uh, bar VI function, I mean, this is always larger than uh, VI. Uh, over theta times theta value. 
So this is the point that we say that actually a good thing that we always round up and this uh, very easily uh, build us, uh, uh, give us like uh, this kind of relationship. So after knowing this, uh, we then know that actually uh, this is actually going to be smaller than I from S uh, of the bar VI, because actually we are talking about the optimal solution here. Uh, so actually uh, we solve the uh, rounded instance optimal. Okay, so this is the second inequality that we use here. And we need to further understand what is the, the next thing that we can talk about. I mean, basically, uh, we have like reduced uh, from uh, v, uh, i to vs uh, to bar of vi here. And basically, uh, this is uh, uh, implicitly the place where we reduce the, uh, we relate the problem of bar vi to the problem half vi. That actually, we ut utilize the fact that the round instance actually we can solve it optimally and actually uh, based on our observation here that the optimal solution to the problems with uh, half v and bar v, uh, they're actually just equivalent. So this is something good, but furthermore, we still need to uh, make this back to the original problem. And the way that we are going to make uh, this back to the original problem is just that uh, we notice that actually we are just rounding this. We are just not, we, we are not like, like just destroying the problem. The rounding of something makes a lot of sense that actually uh, this is going to be smaller than I of us. Uh, vi plus theta. And this is due to the fact that actually we never round uh, up by more than theta. So why is this the case? Uh, we can still look at uh, 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 the discussion here. So when we round it an uh, entry to the closest integer, uh, there is actually an inequality like this. So actually x uh, the salient function of x is always larger than x and smaller than x plus one. So in particular here, I mean, we are talking about the bar of vi here. We then know actually the bar of vi is actually smaller than vi over theta plus one times theta, which is actually just vi. And this is actually the place where we use, use this up. And after that, taking a close look about like what this is, I mean, uh, we are taking a summation of all the i from s, and there are just at most n items, and we know that this is uh, going to be smaller than n theta, plus the summation of i from s of the i. And this is uh, just due to the fact that actually the cardinality of s is at most n. And this is the place, and actually uh, due to our choice of the theta. So basically, this is the specific place where uh, if you look back, okay, I should take theta to be a, uh, um, uh, epsilon times v max over n here. So this is actually a place uh, we can see that actually uh, this is uh, going to be smaller than one plus epsilon times a sigma uh, i from s. Uh, I. So here, maybe uh, we probably need a little bit more calculation here. So it's just because that due to the choice of the value theta here, so we choose uh, theta to be actually uh, epsilon times v max over n, uh, then we know that actually n theta goes to epsilon v max. And basically we know that the v max, I mean, just choosing this uh, maximum value and actually without loss of generality as we just uh, discussed here. So we assume that actually the w max is actually smaller than or equal to w. So I mean, for, for an uh, uh, input problem, so for instance here, I mean, for instance here, assume that here, I mean, uh, the weight here is like a hundred and the input weight is only like 10. You can just feel free to just delete this one because this item is never going to be helpful for you. And this is actually a point where we have assumed that actually uh, the, the maximum, I mean, the V max is corresponding with W max is actually at most W here. So in terms of that, I mean, uh, based on this assumption, we can always, I mean, like one possibility is just that you just choose that item and you just choose the, 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 the V max item. I mean, this is always a solution here. And we know that this is actually going to be bounded by summation of i from s here. So this is uh, just uh, going to be the fact because we are talking about the uh, the, the, the algorithm uh, here. So basically we, we know that actually the, the s here, so it's actually uh, the uh, the algorithm that we are going to have such kind of guarantee. And basically uh, we, we just finishes the proof. Or I guess maybe let me uh, make this uh, Okay, so uh, any questions? 
So basically for this uh, uh, knapsack problem, actually you can see that actually our approximation algorithm, I mean, compared to the uh, load balancing uh, uh, problem and also the similar selection problem, where actually the approximation ratio is a uh, constant larger than one. So here for the knapsack problem, actually our approximation ratio is actually arbitrarily close to one. And actually if our approximation ratio is epsilon, uh, we can give an algorithm with complexity uh, NQ over epsilon, and this is actually quite good. Okay, so uh, any questions for the uh, approximation algorithm for the knapsack problem? Okay, so I think we basically have 10 minutes and I think uh, I would like to thank you uh, all for your attendance and guess this is basically the end of my lectures. And as I just uh, I mentioned, I think uh, basically for the next lecture, uh, uh, the, the, the class in week 14, we are going to have course presentations and for the uh, very uh, last uh, uh, class in this uh, semester, we are going to have an in-class final exam. So basically this is the end of the semester where I, uh, gave you, I'm giving you presentations and introduce you uh, like uh, basically about algorithm analysis and complexity theory. And I think maybe we can take a, a brief uh, summary of the semester. So for the summary of the semester, I think uh, basically in this semester, we have been talking about like a lot of different things. So basically for the uh, first uh, two lectures, so we talk about the basics of algorithm designs and also about like a graph. And basically uh, we uh, introduce uh, a few, uh, also a few uh, different problems like stable meshes and topic conditions, et cetera. And also for graphs, we uh, introduce a lot of uh, definition related to graphs. So next, and I think uh, basically the most important part of the semester is that we introduce uh, four very important uh, kinds of ideas for designing algorithms. Basically, greedy algorithm uh, divide and conquer uh, dynamic programming and network flow. So for all of them, uh, basically we have a uh, 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 measured uh, quite a few uh, different uh, instances and really, really ranges a lot of uh, different like scenarios, like uh, those uh, graphs, like for instance, Huffman close on information theory, and basically, uh, for instance, uh, also some geometry problem, like finding the closest pair of points uh, using divide and conquer, uh, like uh, uh, numerical algebra uh, problems, like um, integer matrix multiplication, like fast Fourier transform, and also for instance, like dynamic programming that really covers a lot of, I mean, real problems, for instance, like knapsack problem, et cetera. And also the network flow problem can also reduce to a lot of, I mean, uh, practical problems to that, uh, uh, all using this uh, kind of ideas. So basically the greedy uh, divide and conquer dynamic, pro uh, dynamic program and network flow, they are like uh, the most common ideas uh, uh, in terms of algorithm design. So and I guess basically for such kind of like a, a graded course, I guess we cannot probably cover all kinds of aspects in terms of uh, algorithm designs. But I guess basically after taking this course, I think it would be great that you can remember all of this uh, kind of four uh, algorithm design ideas. So basically towards the end of the semester, we also talked about uh, uh, complexity theory and uh, after that approximation algorithm. So in terms of a uh, complexity theory, we basically talk about N NP and uh, computational intractability. So that really talks about like uh, the definition of uh, complexity classes like N, a P, NP, a co NP, and also subsequently the definition of NP completeness. So all these kind of definitions uh, among those uh, polynomial time reductions are extremely important. And after that, we talk about the cook levin theorem, the NP completeness of the circuit set problem, the three set problem. And subsequently, we can make reductions to a lot of problems and basically show a lot of the problems that are actually also NP complete problems. And after having that, we briefly talk about some more at once uh, complexity classes like pH, uh, P space, exponential time. Uh, but actually, uh, this is a little bit more at once, I guess. It's just like for understanding about how complexity theory, I mean, I mean uh, beyond uh, uh, NP is actually going to look like. So for this lecture, which is the last lecture, we talk about approximation algorithm. And that's basically, this is a perspective uh, to show that, I mean, be, I mean, even though some problem, they're NP-complete problem, but actually we can still give a relatively good uh, algorithm that with actually uh, quite good approximation ratio to this. Okay, so this is like a very brief summary for the semester. And I guess the uh, probably the most important thing that <laughs> I'm going to introduce, I guess probably you are also very interested in is about the form of the final exam. So as I just mentioned, uh, the final exam is going to take place in, in class on week uh, 15, uh, which is the precise time is just going, is going to be December 13th uh, from the uh, 10 over uh, 3 p.m. until the 6 p.m. 
the full grade of the final exam is going to be uh, 80 points. So as I described at the beginning of the semester, so the final exam is going to take the 40% of the final grade. So I just make the uh, full grade of the final exam to be uh, 80 points. So that just like divide by two is directly going to give you the point. I mean, the part to the, to the final grade, I guess, which is probably going to be uh, convenient here. So in general, the problems uh, we are going to have a uh, similar style compared to assignment problems. Uh, so in particular, I guess uh, the final exam is roughly speaking are going to have uh, these kind of uh, components. So at the beginning, we have roughly like uh, 15 minutes to talk about a uh, basic mathematics. So like the you know, assignment one, we talk about like a symptotic uh, growth. And I think in particular, I mean, like uh, in divided and concrete in dynamic programs, uh, we have a lot of recursive formulas. And I think there will probably be a, a problem to examine uh, whether we can solve such kind of recursive formula. So those are like a basic problem uh, for uh, a basic math. And for all the, for all the four uh, main uh, uh, parts, and I think basically for algorithm parts, and also com in the complexity theory parts are uh, showing that pro some problem is NP complete. So these are like five uh, main parts that introduced in this uh, class. And for greedy, uh, divided and conquer dynamic programming and network flow, AP completeness. For this uh, five main parts, you are expected to have one uh, main problem for each of them. And each of them is going to take 10 to 15 minutes, uh, uh, 10 to uh, 15 uh, points each. And there will be no question for like uh, more than once complexity theory beyond the NP. So basically for the more than once part that I introduced in the last lecture. So there will be no question for that. So for approximation algorithm, uh, basically for the thing that I talked about uh, this class, so there will be no um, separate main problem for that. Although for, uh, for one of the problems, I mean, one of the problems along the way of uh, talking about greedy uh, divine and conquer dynamic programming network flow, uh, network flow algorithms, Along the way, um, uh, one of the problem, we can actually give a relatively good approximation algorithm and there will be five points, like, like a side question to ask about that approximation algorithm. And I believe that this side question for approximation algorithm should not be difficult. So it should be, I mean, the, for that problem, approximation algorithm should be relatively straightforward. But I think this is just to uh, examine that actually have a good understanding about what approximation algorithm is. Okay, so this is uh, basically the plan for the, uh, for the final exam and basically for the, I guess for the whole semester. So is there uh, any question uh, for, for the final exam and in general about our course? Okay, so if there is no question, uh, just uh, remember to attend the uh, presentations uh, next week. And if you have not like booked the slot for your final presentation next week, uh, just just do that. So the link is actually posted in the important announcement uh, that actually I uh, posted in the course in the course website. Uh, sorry, in the course of pku.edu.cn in the uh, by email to you and also in the chat box here. So just uh, remember to uh, book a slot for the final presentation next week. And also uh, don't uh, uh, forget to attend the final exam. This is very important. I mean, some students have asked to have like a pass fail. Uh, uh, grade for the for the course. So this is definitely okay. And okay. So uh, by the way, if you want to apply for taking the final grade as pass fail or uh, take the uh, final exam online, just uh, you must uh, make the application before the final exam starts. And actually, uh, just for the convenience, and I guess we just uh, the we uh, require that uh, uh, all these kind of requirements. I mean, for taking the final exam online or the pass fail grade must be applied uh, like uh, a, a day ahead. So basically, by the end of the uh, December 12th. So this is very important. So uh, basically for this uh, final exam, you, you must uh, remember to uh, come. And also, so I, I need to point out that uh, if some student didn't attend the final exam, that is just a sign of fail, no matter if it's a lighter grade or a pass fail. I mean, all students must attend the final exam for to, to at least get a pass or at least get a, get a I think at least D above. A D above, I mean, it's basically a pass a sign for the final grade. So all students must attend the, the final exam. So this is very important. Okay, so uh, if there is no question, I think I would like to thank you again. So this is actually the first time that I talked, uh, I taught this algorithm analysis and complex theory class and also in, in full English. And I guess uh, this is really a wonderful experience to work uh, with all of you. And I look forward to your uh, final presentation, uh, final pre uh, report. The deadline of the final report is going to be the end of week uh, 14. Uh, I will send a, a, a reminder uh, and also I will also send a reminder for that. And actually don't forget to attend the final exam and I will um, see you then. Yeah, thank you for all of you. Thank you.